All righty. Guess time is now. Um, good morning, all. Um, Mahesh Narayanan, I lead the product management for several investments and initiatives in Microsoft Cloud for Sustainability. Super happy to be here. Um, you know, first of all, it's, it's nothing like directly interacting with all of you who have been so instrumental in helping us with sustainable data solutions in, micro, uh, in Microsoft Fabric. Um, this is a new capability that what we've been working in Microsoft Fabric, and uh, it, uh, I'm super happy to announce that we are general availability. Um, how many of you, a show of hand, how many of you attended yesterday's Arun Ulagarajagan's uh, Microsoft Fabric session? Fantastic. You must have seen this particular solution getting announced as general available as part of that. Um, super delighted to get into the details of what this offering is all about and stuff. All right, um, on the agenda, basically, very simple agenda. Uh, the initial two points is more of anchor points for us to understand why sustainability is important. I'm pretty sure this is top of mind for all of us. We all would be able to relate to you know, various different aspects that I'm gonna speak over here. And also trying to look at why sustainability is a big data problem is another one which we would like to spend some time on. And then we are gonna take a journey into the sustainability data solutions in Microsoft Fabric. We are gonna look at it in broad three perspective you know, trying to understand data translations, data augmentation, and data intelligence, right? Um, super happy also to, you know, share, uh, you know, dear partners like USD Global who has helped us in validating this particular capability and how they have, you know, um, uh, you know, provided constructive feedback and improvements for us to, you know, take things uh, towards the general availability and stuff, and happy to share their journey as well, you know as part of the process. All righty. Um, I'm planning to just give a high-level view uh, with a small video here on how industry solutions in Microsoft Fabric is helping, you know, by and large, several industry vertical customers and stuff. It's a short video. The primary idea is, or primary intent is basically to just give a feeler of how Microsoft Fabric and the industry solutions in Microsoft Fabric is helping the customers. Right, let's go through the video and then I'll quickly jump into the sustainability topic. Accelerate the transformation of your data into business value with industry solutions in Microsoft Fabric, featuring connectors, data models, and purpose-built applications that are ready to deploy out of the box. But unlocking that potential starts with a unified pool of data. How do you pull this specialized information into a cohesive, compliant, actionable source of truth. It starts with unifying your data through connectors built for industry needs and regulations. Bring in data from on-premises devices, relational databases, media, and more, and connect your existing industry-specific systems to Microsoft Fabric, paving the way for your AI journey. Next, harmonize and enrich your data with industry standard models pre-built in Microsoft Fabric. Structured and unstructured data can be brought together to provide industry context and accelerate data projects. Whether optimizing patient care or evaluating carbon emissions, better data models lead to better data decisions. Finally, activate industry scenarios with purpose-built solutions that matter to your industry. Kickstart the development phase and utilize out-of-the-box templates that are ready to deploy. Combine Microsoft Fabric low-code and generative AI capabilities to enhance your industry-specific solutions and get to insights faster. Across industries, Microsoft Fabric is supercharging ROI, increasing productivity, and delivering enhanced business results. Learn more about the industry solutions that are relevant to your business and make better decisions based on better data. Fantastic, hope that was helpful. Um, quickly getting to the topic, sustainability, why sustainability is important. And this is something which I'm pretty sure most of us would be able to relate to. We're clearly seeing a lot of regulations getting, you know, uh, defined, redefined, and refined. There's increase in regulations which we all need to, you know, be compliant about. We also see a great degree of accountability from a sustainability point of view that which we need to cater to from a business perspective. And this accountability is something which we need to help with our customers, investors, partners, and even government agencies. And there's a great deal of you know, um, environmental impact, you know, how we are trying to really contain that, 
and substantiating some of those initiatives is something which we all need to share out as well. So we clearly see that as a challenge that which we need to, you know, um, gear and solving. We're also seeing sustainability being in a prime time at this point, in, uh, you know, at this point in time, where we are clearly seeing a lot of business strategies um, and uh, you know, sustainability related initiatives getting really merged together in offering interesting value prop, both from market opportunity point of view as well as in a business uh, perspective. Now, all of this is not possible if you're not having a single viewpoint of data. And today, that is a challenge, at least for many customers, right? Because the data are in silos. We are not able to really process this particular data for us to get to you know, certain, uh, certain level of analytics viewpoint um, through which we are able to really make certain data-driven decision or intelligence-based decision-making and stuff. So that's one of the key you know, challenges as well that we are facing in trying to solve these particular problem, right? From a big data problem point of view, we're clearly seeing you know, uh, our regulations has been for you know, around 1,000 plus regulations and things are still emerging. Uh, there are a lot of data points you know, which these regulations required with fine nuances and highly subjective requirement. And um, it is just not about producing the data for these particular uh, you know, uh, regulatory directives, but then it's also about substantiating with evidences and many such kind of a data. Um, we're also seeing you know, environmental impact with not just carbon emissions, but then water, waste, um, pollution, many other indexes, indexes like you know, sustainable topics which we all need to be on top of when it comes to um, you know, managing and addressing um, you know, the business's requirement and stuff. All of this is really coming together as a big data challenge from a sustainability point of view. So are we trying to solve this? So this is where sustainability data solutions and Microsoft Fabric is really trying to help customers in meeting these challenges um, or taking on these particular challenges with a little bit more you know, control on top of the data and, and stuff. So let, let's just take a quick view of what is sustainable data solutions in Microsoft Fabric. Um, this is a prepackaged offering which we help customers to leverage some of the core components of Microsoft Fabric. But then, you know, it is just not about Microsoft Fabric artifacts. They all have been curated for sustainability-related requirements. For example, lake houses are with you know, ESG data model, which is highly you know, schematized for you know, various different regulatory and analytics kind of a requirement. So there is um, you know, a very comprehensive and extensible schema that what we have as part of a lake house. We also have you know, several data pipeline and data flows built you know, for customers to really go leverage in bringing in the data into the sustainable data solutions, right? And, and that said, customers can really go and bring in more data from diverse different data sources into the system, leveraging Microsoft Fabric's huge you know, list of connectors and, and stuff, and they can really build those data pipelines with those connectors. We have built ESG metrics capability, which is something unique that what we are offering, which is actually to streamline and have a better orchestration layer when it comes to tackling the regulatory reporting requirements when it comes to metrics attributed to different disclosure requirements. Um, and that's something you know, which is of a great interest to, uh, for customers, and we have been you know, making a lot of improvements on that. Uh, we made certain investments which we are trying to advance into several other regulatory directives as well. Then, of course, reporting and analytics dashboard. Now, all of this is prepackaged pre from a sustainability point of view, right? Now, what does this enable? You know, this enables the customers to really quickly focus on bringing together the data and curate the data for various different you know, consumption requirement and also integrate with various downstream application systems. Right? This could be for your report and auditing purposes or even for your line of business applications. And, um, you know, and of course, from a dashboard and you know, leveraging BI tools as well as part of the same. So giving a quick view of the user persona dimension here. So who are the typical users that what we have seen for sustainable data solutions, right? Um, often we have seen data engineers spending a lot more time in creating the sustainable data lake, you know, for, as part of their ESG data estate requirement. And this is for you know, really standardizing the data for various different um, you know, sustainability initiatives and reporting needs. Sustainable practitioners would like to leverage some of these curated data for various different reporting and compliance and even reduction you know, related strategies and, and planning the reduction strategies, if I may. Data scientists are involved in really creating 
some of the you know custom um, actionable custom insights you know with predictive analysis forecasting and many such right so we have seen different class of user personas leveraging fabric and system data solutions extensively to meet the sustainability kind of need Moving forward, um, as I mentioned, Sasuri Data Solutions is a prepackaged offering. Now, that's a solution, right? This solution is also having several capabilities that is shipping as part of this offering. And we'll double click into it as part of our you know, demo experiences. But then here is a quick view of the five capabilities that what we are offering as part of general availability. We have created this way so that we really cater to specific personas need when it comes to these capabilities. For example, environmental data and insights, we typically imagine an IT administrators um, you know, extensively using it. And this is all about being on top of envi environmental footprint. This could be carbon, water, waste, pollution, and many such kind of indexes. And, and, and this particular solution helps in integrating with several first party, third party systems, you know, which is handling sustainability management today or even otherwise. Social and governance insights is largely curated for you know, HR, finance kind of a stream of, um, you know, uh, uh, product lines. And we offer rich insights when it comes to these indexes. This is one of those particular product line which, um, you know, is quite competitive, I would say, in the market when it comes to rich indexes that what we offer from regulatory point of view. Then, of course, our ESG metrics. This is a capability that what I just alluded to earlier, which helps in sustainability practitioners to leverage it to quickly meet their regulatory standard and requirements. Now, all of these three solutions, you could extensively use this for your line of business applications your, or your workloads. But when you have these workloads run on Azure, then you would like, like to be interested to see how the emissions of Azure is also really catering to some of the scope three dimension of um, you know, insights, and which is where the Azure emissions insights is gonna help customers with a very granular level of looking at emission information based on the usage of the Azure resources. We look at it at you know, subscription as well as at a resource level. Now, all of these four, so, four solutions have just one common sustainability data lake, that is the ESG data estate. That's a solution which helps in streamlining the entire uh, sustainability data, business data, you know, reference data, like your organizational structure data, all of that into one data estate to meet your sustainability requirement and stuff. All right, so as I mentioned, we're just gonna take the journey now to double click into each, in, into the sustainable data solutions into three broad categories, the data translation, data augmentation, and then the data intelligence piece. So let's just drill into the data translation piece. So what is da data translation? We just spoke about, you know, this diverse set of, you know, uh, data sources from which we need to bring in different data for us to really get to meet the need of ESG uh, you know, uh, sus or sustainability topics. And, and this requires certain translations, and the translations require, you know, obviously certain transformation logics, and which is what we have pre-built into some of our, um, you know, offering, as well as customers can leverage, you know, some of the data flow kind of a technology in the fabric to go build their own translation logic as well. Um, we also offer the sustainable data lakes with, you know, uh, which has a transformation logic for us to quick customers to quickly get a view of ESG kind of a data as well as the Azure emissions, uh, you know, data. Getting into the demo, let's take a quick walkthrough of discoverability of system data solutions in Microsoft Fabric and how do customers get to deploy it and also understand what does one system data lake really mean. That's something which we'll take, uh, take through as part of a demo. All right. So this is the landing page experience of Microsoft Fabric, where you can see in the workloads view, there's an industry solutions. And the industry solutions have several industry solutions like you know, retail solutions, healthcare, and sustainability solutions. This particular page gives you a lot of information with regard to each of these particular solutions that you can you know, take an offline look at. Um, once you deploy the solution, here is the four, five capabilities that I just alluded to, which you know, would be able to deploy. And the first solution that I really required to deploy is the ESG data estate. When you deploy the ESG data estate, you can see there are several you know, artifacts of fabric that gets deployed as part of this particular solution. They are like your you know, three data lakes, what we call as the ingested, processed, and computed data lakes. You can also equate them to your bronze, silver, and gold based on the medallion architecture. 
We also have a data lake where we have the configuration and the demo information stored. And the demo data is largely for you to quickly understand the capabilities of sustainability data solutions um, you know, with the demo data. And then, of course, there are a bunch of notebooks that is going to help you with data transformation, data quality checks, and, and, and you know, having the data processed into your processed ESG data lake. Now, if you really look at, now we'll just try to zoom in each of these different data lakes. We're going to quickly run about the notebook, which is going to help in bringing the configuration of the demo data. And once you have that, now we are going to look at the ingested raw data lake house. Typically, ingested raw data lake house is the place where you would be bringing in various different data from your business systems that's relevant for your sustainability, um, you know, so that you can start uh, you know, curating the data for your you know, uh, sustainability-related requirements and stuff. And here, you know, it need not be about you know, copying the data from various different systems into this particular lake, but then you could also leverage the shortcut capability of bringing the data from um, you know, a dataverse kind of a system, which is Microsoft Sustainability Manager, you know, for various different data that you can bring in into uh, your lake house from a shortcut point of view. Right. And then there is processed ESG lake house. You know, we have the notebooks, which is going to help in transforming this particular data from ingested data lake house you know, into your you know, processed ESG data lake schema. Now, here you can see the various different tables are already schematized. You know, we have various different um, you know, sustainability topics-based tables that has been created, and all the data that what you have got into the ingested lake house is able to be transformed to the process ESG data lake house. Computed ESG metrics is far more refined. Typically, we have, uh, you know, we have it as a practice that the computed ESG metrics is something which has curated the data for certain consumption requirement. It could be for your reporting requirement or your analytics kind of a requirement. And that requires a different level of transformation. So we again, you know, transform that particular data and then start, you know, or, you know, organizing the data into various different you know, uh, tables, which is going to help you in consumption. For example, the aggregate data, the year-on-year -year aggregation or month-on-month -month aggregation. Um, now, that could be for the emissions, and there are several other sustainable topics like that you could be actually organizing the data with. So all of this is how we get to start the setup of the sustainable data solutions with the ESG data estate, and, you know, and understanding about the three lake houses um, including the config and demo lake house as well. Moving to the next you know, scenario, we'll try to just tr take a sneak peek into some of the data that what we are able to bring into the lake house. Um, maybe the scope three emission, you know, which is kind of tracked in the Azure SQL um, you know, by customers, or we are bringing in some of the reference data, which is your, typically your organization data or facility data, all of that which you have today as part of the Microsoft Sustainability Manager, along with several other en environmental data we would be able to bring into your lake house, right? We'll try to take a look at some of those scenarios as well. Um, so here is the ingested raw data lake house, and we typically, as I mentioned, we're bringing in you know, uh, data from the MSM, and at this point in time we're trying to bring in your organization data you know, from Microsoft Sustainability Manager, so you, here you can see your facility data that you're able to bring in, which has already been you know, organized in Microsoft Sustainability Manager or the organization data, along with several other environmental data you would be able to bring into the lake house. And all of this is shortcut. You're not actually copying the data into your lake house. Um, you're able to bring in the scope three emission as well you know, from an Azure SQL, which, which is a you know, back in where it is getting stored today. Um, you're able to bring that kind of information also into your lake house. Right. Once you bring this data into the lake house, now you would be, you know, running your data transformation logic for you to actually, uh, you know, have the ingested data lake house transformed into the schema that what um, we we have um, built into our silver lake house or the processed lake house, right? And so here we're going to run the notebook, and once you have this particular notebook run from and this is just giving you a view of the ingested you know, raw data lake house. And here is the notebook that what we have, the processed ESG data lake house. And then when we are having you know, some of the notebooks you know, running, here is the transformation logic that what we're doing for water data or the scope three raw data, all of that you know, can be 
basically run, and now we get the transformed data stored in your process lake house. And you can look at the process lake house, you know, highly curated for various different requirements. There you go. So it has the connotation of your, you know, for your emissions data or your water data, it has your connotation with regard to your, um, you know, facility and your organization, all of those information stored over there. Okay, now what we have done here is we have broadened the data into the process lake house and we, we are trying to look at yet another data set that what we can bring into a process lake house, which is the Azure emissions data. And, you know, for which we have a separate capability known as Azure Emissions Insights. This capability helps in connecting to your you know, Azure resources to get all the data, and we have a backend pipeline which is gonna help with all of those information that you can bring into a lake house. Um, once you have this deployed, now you can see as part of the deployment, you know, we do not have any separate lake house that has got created as part of this capability because we're gonna leverage the ESG data estate you know, from a lake house point of view. What we have over here is just notebooks and semantic model for us to bring in the data and curate the data for you know, processed data lake. And this is your ingested raw data lake where you're able to see all of these um, JSON objects, which is the emission information from um, you know, Azure. And here you can see now in the computed ESG lake house, you can look at each of the emission information for various different subscription and the resource. You know, from which Azure region, this particular resource is, all of this information is now as part of your computed ESG lake house. We also offer rich dashboard through which you would be able to really look at various different aspect of emissions, um, trend of the total emissions for all the Azure usage that you're consuming. You're able to look at the top contributing subscriptions, resources that is actually having you know, more emissions, um, segmentation of you know, emissions in, in, in the context of various different services. We also help with certain comparison of um, you know, uh, subscriptions uh, you know, from an emission point of view. Here you can look at you know, there's a subscription 10 and an eight in a different region, which you are able to compare against various different resources, which might be of interest when you're trying to look at a workload um, you know, that you're running in Azure and you would like to have leverage some of these um, you know, resources in the context of emissions, you would be able to determine that. So this is all about Azure Emissions Insights, which is providing you rich insight when it comes to uh, you know, how Azure usage is contributing to your workload from an emission perspective. Now, all what we saw here was from a data translation point of view, which is about bringing in the data from diverse different systems and then curating the data into your processed lake house, um, um, you know, which, is, which is having the standard schema. And then you're able to take it into your computed you know, ESG lake house, where you're able to really purpose that particular data for various different reporting and analytics kind of a requirement, or even integrating with several you know, business applications that you might be having. Now let's take a look at what is data augmentation, right? So the data augmentation is more a capability, um, you know, for helping the customers to curate this particular data for various different purposes, right? Now, when you're looking at you know, certain regulatory requ requirement, you know, there are, there are need for, you know, certain sustainability, data for certain sustainability topics that ne needs to be, you know, purposing for certain metrics of a disclosure requirement. And there's, there's a whole lot of information that needs to be processed and curated for many of those regulatory reports. And that's just one part of the augmentation. Like that, there could be different augmentation for your um, analytics requirement or your audit requirement and stuff. So here, what we have done is more so from the perspective about, you know, from a reporting point of view is what we are just trying to, you know, walk through some of the use cases. And it is just not at the data. We also need to augment that particular data with certain evidences, substantiation for, you know, assurance auditors, you know, when it comes to, you know, um, looking through those particular sustainability topic related metric and data, and then helping the auditors to really audit the information that has been shared against a disclosure requirement. Now, here is a, a high level view of what does a sustainability or ESG metric look like. 
Um, over here, you can see it is, the definition has a name of a specific sustainability topic. Um, it's attributed to emissions from a you know, topic point of view. There's compute logic, which, which is what you know, is the value of the overall ESG metrics capability. You can look at you know, several aspects over here where an aggregation at the, from a source point of view, unit of measure point of view, from a reporting year context. All of that is kind of defined as part of the compute logic. And then there is an output format, which is something which we need to be attributing to various different disclosure requirements for um, you know, uh, various regulatory directives. We also help in labeling you know, each of these ESG metric um, you know, so that it helps in mapping to the appropriate disclosure requirement of a regulatory you know, directive. So let's look at the demo in how a sustainability expert can configure these particular metrics and then are able to really you know, attribute it to some of the um, you know, regulatory directives. Here is another solution that, or capability that we would deploy as part of sustainability solutions known as the ESNG metrics. We have already had it deployed. And as part of the deployment, you can look at there are various different artifacts that gets deployed as part of the overall offering. This involves semantic model, notebooks, report, and then several other notebooks when it comes to aggregation of the data for certain sustainability topics, right? And here is a quick view of metrics definition. Now, the definition that I just gave a walkthrough, all that is there here for different metrics that what we have you know, pre-built. Um, and this is not just about, you can go leverage what has been pre-built, but then you can go and add your own metric over here, depending on the kind of a disclosure requirement for which you need to be creating these metrics for. And all the information related to the measurement name, the sustainability topics, dimensions, filters, all of that is captured here as part of the metric definition. We also help with labels, which I just alluded to earlier. Um, and now you can look at that particular label having um, information related to disclosure requirement for what disclosure, like a CSRD in, in case of a European Union, and which is a metric ID and stuff. Now, this comes handy when it comes to you know, associating this specific metric to a specific disclosure requirement for a regulatory directive. Now, this, this is a process now. We created the metric definitions, and we have the metric label. All of that is in place. Now we need to really bring the data into these particular metrics so that when, when a customer is able to attribute a metric to a specific disclosure requirement, we are able to see that even this particular data gets you know, um, as part of that. So there's this a you know, data pipeline which is going to help you know, in processing this particular data. It's the loads of definitions. It creates these aggregate metrics. Um, it also generates the output format for those particular metrics, and then it's able to curate some of those as part of notebooks for certain consumption use cases and stuff. So here, the entire data pipeline is run, and we have the curated experience now. Now, all of this emissions aggregate is based on, you know, for a specific metric, the entire data that has been processed and it's been stored as part of the emissions aggregate. And like emissions, there are other sustainability topics as well over here. As you can see, there are water utilization, water storage aggregate, you know, and, and um, Azure emissions, all of those. So this one is the data augmentation you know, area. Now let's try to visualize what is the metrics that has got been created, and, and let's try to understand how that can be leveraged by you know, an auditor from assurance perspective. So here is a view as part of the same ESG metrics cap capability. There's a dashboard that what we offer where you can look at for each of the different metrics, how has been the trend of that particular metric. The metric value itself can be seen over here to which year that metric is, what is the unit of measure, all of that information is here. Um, you're able to look at it in the context of a country or a region or a facility that what you have, scope from a one, scope two or a scope three point of view, all of that you can able to relate to it. And now, you know, when it comes to the auditing, we are having an integration with Microsoft Purview, um, you know, and the Microsoft Purview Connection Manager would help in, 
relating to all these particular metrics and show it as part of the disclosure requirement that is part of the purview compliance manager. Now, the purview compliance manager has a connector, Sustainable Data Solutions, which helps in connecting to an instance of Sustainable Data Solutions. In Microsoft Fabric, it provides all the necessary you know, um, experience for you to provide your authentication information others. Once you have it connected, then you are able to really attribute a specific disclosure requirement to that particular connector. In this case, it is CSRD. The template is part of the Purview Compliance Manager. And, and now you would be able to see the various different disclosure requirement associated um, you know, with the metrics from the Sustainable Data Solutions. The data that what we had in the Sustainable Data Solutions is seen as part of that. Now here is an experience where um, you know, an auditor can go and test and verify each of those particular data and then share some kind of a status for those um, validation and then attribute certain comments. So that, that's how the assurance audit is typically done by an auditor and this, this is how the sustainability practitioner would get to know whether all the data that what has been processed in the sustainable data solutions is now ready and you know, processed by the auditor you know, from an audit perspective and it's prepped ready for us to go to your reporting you know, requirement. At this point in time, I'd like to take a pause and then you know, acknowledge you know, some of the deep partnership that what we've been working with. We had a chance to work with EOST Global and they've been able to solve their sustainability related requirement for their customers with sustainable data solutions. Um, and you know, as part of solving the particular problem, here is a view where there were certain challenges that they were facing from their customer point of view and, and how sustainable data solutions were able to really help in some of those challenges. Unified platform for data integration standardization is a common ask you know, from their customer's point of view and we were able to help that with sustainable data solutions. Now, when it comes to sourcing the data for you know, sustainability needs, there are different class of you know, data sources um, you know, certain class of data sources which is already being curated with the sustainability information and the other sources where you need to be getting the raw data and then you need to process it for your sustainability information. So irrespective of the data sources, we were able to ingest the data and then get the data to the appropriate lake house and, and thereby accelerate the process of creating the sustainability data you know, estate for a customer. Then there were challenges with regard to the analytics for, and for actionable insights. Even as part of the data ingestion, there, is a, there are needs where we need to be helping the customers to analyze the data, and we were able to help, Sustainable Data Solutions were able to help with some of those requirements as well. Um, streamlining the compliance, uh, this was a huge ask because most of the customers are really looking for a very time-bound effort when it comes to you know, creating the uh, report especially from an, from a, for an auditor, from an assurance perspective. And SDSF was able to help with ESG metrics capability to streamline the entire complex and auditing purposes. Cost effectiveness is, you know, of course, very critical. And such data solutions does not come with any cost by itself. It's a value prop in Microsoft Fabric. But the, you know, the pricing model is purely based on the pay as you go of Microsoft Fabric and which just resonated really well with USD Global. And here are some of the key benefits that USD Global you know, referred from Microsoft Fabric Sustainable Data Solutions point of view. SDS was able to help them quickly build custom ESG products, and thereby they were able to manage the customer's portfolio management when it comes to ESG really well. Data quality and standardization was, of course, part of the you know, Sustainable Data Solutions based on the Microsoft Fabric artifacts, but then the schema was quite extensible enough for it to be also interoperable with several other industry semantic model, like the OPC and the OFP. This was really a great feedback and a value. Um, Real-time data processing, as I mentioned, this is super important when it comes to um, you know, meeting the requirement of the customers, not just from a reporting point of view, but from a product carbon footprint or supply chain management perspective in the context of sustainability. Built-in compliance, ESG metrics was able to help them with having certain built-in compliance. Uh, related requirement when it comes to ESG standards and frameworks. And last but not the least, scalability and future proofing. The entire capability is quite extensible. Even though we offer a lot of pre-built capability, everything is quite extensible for customers to go and build uh, and compose based on their requirement. Now come the last piece of the presentation, which is to do with the data intelligence. 
got all this data into the SDSF, it's now very important for customers to really figure out like how they can leverage this for various of their sustainability initiatives. And these initiatives could be, you know, with regard to reduction strategies, supply chain management improvement, product carbon footprint related requirements and stuff. So this is a capability that what we have not built into the sustainable data solutions yet, but then this is something which customers can leverage the Microsoft Fabrics capability and have a do-it-yourself experience explored. And we eventually look to have this built and offered as part of the sustainable data solutions. So let's look at you know, some of the use case over here. Um, the typical use case that what we have seen from an analytics point of view is in offering certain intelligence for various different um, you know, need when it comes to the product carbon footprint or, or sustainability management and others. Um, and, and this intelligence helps in you know, a very data-driven approach when it comes to tackling some of these you know, business-related initiatives. So in the demo, what we are trying to really help uh, you, know, under, you understand from a do-it-yourself point of view is about really exploring, um, looking at all the scope three emissions and figuring out like which are the you know, business activities that is attributing or contributing to you know, um, uh, large amount of emissions, right? And then from there, you will be able to really figure out like how you can really contain some of those or alter some of those business activities and thereby you can get to your reduction strategy and stuff. And in the demo, we would look at, to start from you know, the ESG metric um, you know, capability where we are able to really see the scope three emissions. And as we look through the scope three emissions, we are able to process that information with you know, several other capabilities of Microsoft Fabric like the ML model and AI skill kind of a capabilities which can be leveraged. And here, we are able to process the processed ESG data lake that what we have you know, in arriving at some of the scope three emissions. And I'll quickly walk through the notebook where we are actually running some of the ML model as part of the ML flow. And here the model that what we're using is um, a fit ML model, which is gonna help us in distilling, um, you know, which are the scope three emissions that is contributing, um, you know, to increase in emissions and stuff. And here is, uh, the kind of a data science view that what we have in the fabric, where we have created various different model, the same model, but with different parameter conditions so that we can really run this particular model um, you know, against our data in the sustainable data solutions. And this is a fit forecast that what we have done. And once we run this model, now here you can see that the blue lines are all the you know, emissions information that what we have learned from a scope three point of view. This is all actual. And the dark purple uh, graph is more to do with the forecasting than what we're able to do, right? So here you can see the forecasting actually is able to help in distilling into various different time range beyond uh, you know, the actual information as well. The next part of the you know, scenario is all about do-it-yourself reduction activity impact, which is about water for carbon intensity kind of a data. Now here again, what we are trying to do is that got an understanding of, um, in the previous you know, demo, you must have seen uh, an understanding of, these are the you know, emissions um, you know, based on the scope three categories that is contributing to the maximum emissions in environment. In this case, it is to do with mobile combustion distance and mobile combustion fuel quantity, as well as the stationary combustion quantity. Now, here in the subsequent, um, you know, what if analysis, what we are trying to do is that figuring out like um, doing certain changes, how we would be able to really moderate that particular uh, reduction strategy for those emission categories. And we are able to run over here um, a regression model, and again, based on the notebook in the um, you know, sustainable data solutions. And here in the result, we would be able to see that, you know, if you really look at the mobile combustion model, um, it's gonna take um, you know, much more faster rate at which we would be able to achieve the reduction, um, reduced emissions by 2026. But then if you're really looking at the, um, you know, uh, 
the uh, other uh, combustion model, uh, stationary combustion model, that's going to take more time for us to get to the reduction, emission reduction and stuff. So these are the kind of you know, deep ML model related analysis that what can achieve out of the um, you know, Microsoft Fabrics capability along with the sustainability data solutions and stuff. All righty, hope this was helpful. I'm just keeping some time for us to have a Q&A. Um, and here is learn more about Microsoft Fabric. You can kind of scan the QR code and then learn more about the Fabric information. Open to questions. Right. So, um, are the industry solutions options available now, or are those coming in the future? I did a search and it kind of led through a free trial that looks like it's related to a yeah. manager that's a larger package. Yeah. Like, yeah. And how does all that come together? That's right. So, um, I, I guess the healthcare related industry solution is also um, available, generally available. Um, you know, I think so. That's the announcement that what we saw in Arun's session yesterday. A couple of other industry solutions which are still, you know, in works, and um, you know, yeah. The second question is about how they're going to interoperate, you know, between these industry solutions and stuff. So that's the beauty of Microsoft Fabric when it comes to the having a common lake house. You would be able to really, you know, have these particular data models interoperable, um, you know, because they're all coming out of the same industry data model, you know, schema. Correct. Soon. That is right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any other question? All righty. So um, thanks a lot for your time. I hope this was helpful. Um, the whole idea was to provide you a brief overview of such data solutions, the kind of value that what you're able to bring in especially for the you know, highly needed ESG-related requirement, especially on regulatory reporting and reduction strategies that customers are really trying to focus and build uh, value for. And uh, yeah, this, this slide is all about, you know, there's going to be a, a Fabcon you know, sometime uh, in March and April 2025. Um, you know, please keep following all our improvements that what we do in the sustainable data solutions and otherwise can be you know, learned out of these particular events. Thanks a lot.